All right, I think we can get started now. I see people are joining. Thank you guys so much for joining us for this Build Your Brand event. We are doing a panel discussion today on building your brand. And we have three panelists. Um, I am Hannah Scarborough. I am the uh, chair for programs with Spartanburg Young Professionals. So um, that's just a quick introduction of who I am. And uh, our panelists are Alex Moore. She's the senior director of brand experience for United Way of the Piedmont. Uh, Alex, maybe introduce yourself really quick. Oh, sure. Yeah, I'm um, Alex Moore with United Way of the Piedmont. We cover Spartanburg, Cherokee, and Union counties. I've been with United Way for four and a half years, and uh, our department recently changed, actually, to the title Brand Experience. It used to be Marketing and Communications, so really expanding to really truly reflect that it's about brand. So um, I'm excited to be here and share a little bit with you guys today. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, next, we have Lainey Whitaker, who is the founder and president of Arrowhead Design Company. Uh, Lainey, go ahead and introduce yourself. She's also on our Spartanburg Young Professionals Board, so. Sure, yep, like she said, I'm Lainey Whitaker. Um, I am president of Arrowhead Design Company. I founded it about five years ago now. We do branding for um, clients all over the upstate and even beyond that. Um, so we have a little bit of a take um, on branding businesses, but also a little bit of personal branding as we do it for ourselves with our Berg apparel. Um, so, and I'm also the communications chair, like Hannah said. So um, that's it. Awesome. And then last but not least, Mark Nelson, who is, uh, works with uh, Spartanburg Wastes. Mark? Hey, good morning or afternoon now that we have hit the noon hour. And listen, I don't know if it's just me, but I swear I think the camera ages me 10 years. I'm 53. <laughs> Does it make me look worse now? Uh, hey, guys, I started uh, Spartan Waste with another gentleman two and a half years ago. We are a residential and commercial waste business here in the upstate. And, uh, you know, we've had tremendous growth in the two and a half years that we've had the business. We've gone from call it roughly a thousand customers to thousand customers. We're getting to roll out a new division and uh, we were incredibly uh, cognizant of branding ourselves, of attaching ourselves locally and how we use our brand every single day is still vitally important to our long range goals and plans and uh, look forward to participating in the conversation. Well, we're so thankful for you guys joining us to chat about this. I do want to give a huge shout out to Denny's and Regenesis Healthcare. They're our sponsors for this event. We cannot have these events and support what we do without our sponsors. So um, just a big shout out to them. And I will just kick us off with um, a question. What, what is a brand and what does that mean? <laughs> Sure. Um, I can answer that just to get things rolling here. Um, at Arrowhead, the first thing that we like to mention when it comes to branding is that it is not just aesthetic. So when you look at someone's logo and, um, you know, their marketing materials and things like that, um, their brand goes much deeper than that. They're also planning a story behind it, a message behind it, a mission. And the first thing you want to do, whether you're an individual or a business, which hopefully we'll be able to cover here for the most part between um, our speakers, um, you want to do things different ways. But the one consistent thing when it comes to branding is it's not just how you look, it's how you sound. Um, so I think from a local perspective, um, all three of us will be able to, to speak to that. But from a national um, perspective, um, I think Alex might have a little bit more on that um, with United Way of the Piedmont because United, United Way is pretty big if you've heard of them. So. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And I'll just, I mean, to, to piggyback off what you were saying, a brand is not just how it looks um, or and it's also how it sounds, but it's also like how it feels, like how it makes you feel. I think a lot about a brand is like that your gut reaction when you see it um that is a lot of what is encompassed in a brand and it's it's just like the feel the vibe of it it's it's almost like hard to pinpoint with a definition because it's just as you know if you ask the question you know what is a brand 
it's all of those things. And it's all of those things that, that come together, whether it's a brochure, an Instagram post, like all of those things together, it creates your impression of that business company organization. And so that is kind of like how I define it, but yeah, I mean, and you know, I'm sure we'll dig into this later, but just kind of to talk about the national brand versus local and, and that gut reaction is kind of for United Way, or at least in my role at the local United Way, United Way of the Piedmont, it's actually a challenge because we are part of a actual global network. There are United Ways all across the world. Um, and people know us, they recognize our, our brand, they recognize our logo, but they may not know what the local United Way of the Piedmont is doing because we're totally you know different from even a United Way down the road. Um, so it's, it's a challenge because when you have a brand and you have pe that recognition and people have that gut reaction to it, you know, um, for at least, you know, it, it's a, it, for us, it can be a challenge too, because then if you have people with a gut reaction and maybe that's not a great one or, or something else has contributed to that impression of their brand, um, you know, that's first impressions matter, right? So it's, it's, it's a balance of competing with our brand that people know, but also trying to inform them about what we're doing here locally. And also first impressions are not always face-to-face -face nowadays. Right. So um, you have to look out for your digital first impression as yes. well. Yes, 100%. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I may chime in really quick after I take a quick drink from my koozie. <laughs> And with our logo on there, I, I think Lainey hit it really uh, on the head there where it's, it's not only your brand, but it's the story that your brand tells. And that story can be woven in many different ways. You know, for us being, you know, something that's unglamorous, like a trash business, right? You know, we need to be professional, dependable, reliable, trustworthy, but then you have to have the softer things like we're friendly, you know, we're fun, we're charismatic, we're local. So I think all of this, as we kind of were laying our foundation and, and, and setting up our pillars, you know, we understood that, you know, we wanted our brand to represent our business in the best possible light that it possibly could. And uh, although we're sitting on this panel together, and this is not, you know, to gain business for Arrowhead, Lainey and her creative team at Arrowhead have been instrumental, you know, in guiding us on a lot of this process as well. And for folks that are participating in this, I realized that I wasn't an expert. And as a matter of fact, when you at 53, guess what? I'm not a big social media guy. <laughs> And when Mark and I went in and had a meeting with Arrowhead and we said, hey, well, look, we may want you guys to kind of handle this. We think we need to have it because, again, we're trying to be fun and current. And I'm like, if we post something once a month, you know, we'll be all set. And Lainey's comment back to me verbatim was, if you post something once a month, you're wasting your money and you shouldn't do it. You know, this has to be a living thing, right? It has to be current. And you're constantly you know, you want to, to rest on your track record of success, right? We've got a demonstrated record of success, but at the same time, you always have to be promoting your business if you're trying to grow. And again, that's where your brand, and in this situation, an easily identified logo and a tagline, keep it clean. You know, it was our brand, our logo, our tagline, and then kind of all our other soft sell things there, everything weaves in together. So, uh, I can't tell you how important it is for anybody to spend time on this. This is living. This is not something that you just do once and you're like your mission statement. Oh, that's good for five years. No, it's constantly evolving. Right. And so that brings up another thing, which is just consistency, which Mark pretty much, um, you know, defined there. But I think the point that he was making too, when it comes to the whole social media posting, um, you know, part of this, because there's lots of different forms of media when it comes to branding. But if we're talking on social media, I think one place that people fail, and it's one of the biggest mistakes you can make, is trying to be on every single platform and trying to be relevant 
and up to date on every single platform. I tell clients all the time and for personal branding, uh, if you're, you know, just doing something for yourself, um, you know, if you're trying to post on a ton of different ones, I mean, there's everything out there now that keeps popping up, whether it's video or, you know, if you're on TikTok, if you're on um, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, you know, there's a place for your business and what you're doing. And it might not always be on all of those platforms because if one is getting completely neglected, you know, you're going to look irrelevant, maybe even out of business um, if you're not posting on it. So I think one of the best tips that we could possibly give you on here is to not overdo it and try and be everywhere, really perfect um, the places that you're good at and choose a couple of avenues to, to market it. Agree. So what do what do you guys too, also other speakers here, as far as consistency goes um, with your marketing, other than social media, do you guys have any other pieces there that you're using consistently um, to market yourselves? Yeah, I mean, I can jump in and I just want to echo and like say preach because um, uh, especially on the like, I, I have done marketing trainings for folks and it's like you may be overwhelmed by the number of platforms and things not every platform is for everybody. <laughs> you know, you really don't have to be on them all. So pick the one that's right for you. I just, and I think sometimes maybe that's like counterintuitive. It's like, oh no, I need to be in as many places as possible, but it's not about that. So I just so appreciate that comment, Lainey. Um, but, you know, as far as other avenues, I mean, social media for us as a nonprofit is, a, is, of course, a huge one because it's so affordable. Because if you want to, you know, boost a post or do an ad, you know, you get to set what that budget is. So you can do a post for like 20 bucks and, and just to kind of get it in front of some fresh eyes. So social media is really, really big for us um, because it's one of the most affordable um, ways to, you know, put some money behind marketing and advertising. Um, but other things that we do, and one that I, I like to mention just because it's, I think, often forgotten is um, public relations old school press releases. And I know that can be sometimes intimidating too. Like I've never written a press release. I have no idea like what, you know, cause there's like a structure and, and all of that. And oh my gosh, am I going to be on TV if I send this? And, um, but it really doesn't have to be that, um, that bad, that intimidating. There are so many outlets and, you know, digital outlets too. So you can submit a story and it'll be published online and then you can share it. So um, I, that's just one that for United Way, actually has been really, really successful in that we, I mean, I've been there for four and a half years. And so I've been able to develop relationships with, um, you know, media outlets. So they know if I send them a press release that, that it's going to be a, a story that they're probably going to be interested in. I don't just send them fluff, you know, but the other thing is there are people behind those media outlets. And so if you know a reporter or get an email or a, a reporter's email, you can send them an email like they're a normal human. You don't even have to have a press release attached. <laughs> and in my experience, Sometimes they don't always read those press releases. No offense to if anyone in media is on this call. Um, <laughs> but, you know, so I think like that news media, because, you know, the news is a, is a hot topic, right? Um, but there's so much news, potentially bad things going on um, that media is often really looking for uh, positive business stories, whether it's a, a company celebrating like a five-year anniversary or, you know, um, something out of the box like that, that maybe you wouldn't think is like newsworthy, but it has been really successful for us just to continue to be again in front of a larger community audience. So I always like to share that. Lanny, I may jump in as well. You know, one of the things where we've had success in is there have been so many folks that have been vital to our personal success as a business and where we can cross promote them, right? It's like our brand gets out there at the same time their brand gets out there. And it doesn't matter if it's something such as, you know, our, our legal office or accounting firm, you know, our service provider, it's the truck mechanic, you know, all these guys are vital and they've, they've kind of fit into our story. And, and we are only on two platforms, Facebook and Instagram, uh, but we're effective on those two platforms because, 
you know, Lainey, thank God she offered the direction. She knew right away we'd be a train wreck if we were trying to do TikTok or some, some <laughs> other things there. But, uh, you know, you mentioned old school press releases. We're doing radio advertising. Okay. And, you know, again, like for my kids' age that are both teenagers, you know, that are always streaming music, it's not like it was when I was a kid and the radio station was just always on your favorite radio station and you had to get through the commercials. But, you know, we've got a relationship with Fox Sports Spartanburg and Ryan Delaney owns that business. And, you know, we provide their trash service, you know, they provide ad space for us. And I can't tell you how many folks come up to me and be like, oh my gosh, I heard your ad on Fox Sports. And uh, another thing, I wish this was my idea because I think it was a great one and we are executing, but it was actually Ryan's idea that, you know, Spartan Waste is going to be co-sponsoring uh, one of the NASCAR race cars for the October 30th Martinsville race. And this was Ryan coming up. Spartanburg actually has one professional athlete, to my knowledge, that lives here in town. And it's Jeremy Clements, who is the most senior Chevrolet driver in all of NASCAR. And Ryan said, Mark, we've got an opportunity to support another small local business here in Spartanburg. Would you do this? And I'm thinking about, for my own personal amusement, seeing the Spartan Way Shield driving around a NASCAR track, which I appreciate, but then knowing you know, that we'll be able to use this for our employees that will like to go up and tailgate and, and see the race and things of this nature. But again, you know, that's pretty big. We sponsor, you know, our sponsor, the Lady Rebels dance team at Burns High School, you know, like we've got banners up at Chesney High School, you know, again, your brand when you're trying to build and get yourself out there, there's so many different creative things that you can do. I mean, we sponsor different things for Children's Cancer Partnership of the Carolinas, the Project Hope Foundation. You know, Arrowhead's been instrumental on that, on doing some pro bono work for them and supporting them. But again, I think as our community, we're all kind of intertwined and we grow together. That again, your brand, you know, who you are gets out there in so many different fronts. So, you know, again, it needs to constantly be paid attention to. This is just not something you do once and then you put it on the shelf and don't worry about it. You, I mean, at least for Spartan Waste, our brand is a living, breathing pillar of our foundation. Another, you guys both made really awesome points when you were talking just now. So I want to hit on both of them really quickly. Um, with that mark and, and branching out to other places that you wouldn't necessarily think of right off the bat to market yourself. Um, that is the one of the key ways to, to be creative with your brand and be out of the box. I know out of the box is a very generic term, but when you box yourself in to what you do, your services, your market, um, and you only try and hit that one audience, you're really missing out um, because there's a lot of different avenues there you can you can uh, you can reach out when it comes to that. So that also hits on one of Alex's points, which was um, spending um, you know ad spend on actual ads on social media. So the whole point of uh, spending money on ads is to reach an audience that you're not currently reaching. So Mark's point when saying, you know, re doing other things that are outside of your, um, you know, comfort zone or what you normally do, um, those are both um, huge ways to reach audiences because one of the first questions I get from businesses or individuals who are looking to build their brand is how in the world do I get my name out there without spending a million bucks, you know? Mm -hmm. So social media is there for that specific, um, you know, for that specific reason, but you can also literally have boots on the ground and go out, you know, and meet face to face. A lot of people don't want to do that nowadays. They don't want to be face to face. Now, obviously health related issues might uh, play into account there. Um, but as far as getting your name out there, sometimes it's good to put a face to it. Um, but one tip also with the social media um, ad spend, because I get this a lot, is where to, where to spend your dollars. And now I know this can be different for big national brands compared to locally. Um, but when it comes to Arrowhead and some of our clients that are here local, I will definitely recommend um, that you err on the side of caution when it comes to Google ads. If you guys are um, familiar with that, you know, you'll get, when you type something in on Google, so say someone's typing in 
um, you know, trash company in Spartanburg, right? Um, the first thing that Google shows is what they want you to see. Google is a company. It's not like the internet is out there for everyone and it's free game. Google decides what um, you see. So if you're paying for ads, you're gonna you know, pop up a lot higher. But remember that most of them are pay per click ads. And what mm -hmm. that means is you can have anyone anywhere clicking on your ads, spending your money. I saw that firsthand um, at the publication company that I used to work for before I started Arrowhead. My boss would literally sit there. He scheduled an hour out of his day to click on our competitors ads so that it would spend their marketing dollars. Now, what his little... <laughs> That's uh, great. What, but what he did not understand was that that also tremendously helped their SEO search engine yep. optimization Which, and their website, yeah. again, outside of ads was still popping up higher than his. So very silly. However, people do stuff like that just to try and spend your money, right? So unless, um, what I always recommend is unless you're willing to throw a lot of money and you have a specific wow. budget yeah, um, for that, uh, be on the, you know, air of caution there with Google ads and, you know, test the waters, see what works. Um, don't throw $5 here at this ad and $5 here at this ad. It's not like social media when it comes to that. You've got to have a higher budget. So um, not that I'm uh, against it there for local businesses, but you have to be willing to test, try and spend money if you're going to, you're going to do that. Um, but social media, on the other hand, um, is normally what I recommend to small businesses because you can kind of do what's according to your budget. You can, um, you know, pick your demographic based on the ads that you specifically are going to post, not ones that you're going to run for a really long time. You know, um, I did just get a tip the other day from a developer that I know that um, with new algorithms and such that Instagram and Facebook are putting in that the longer you run your ads, even if it's for less money daily, um, it helps the algorithm learn a little bit more. They'll store that information. Um, so when you're when you're posting your social media ads, consider at least testing, running them for a longer amount of time than putting. You know, say say you want to run you know no more than a hundred bucks for a social media ad. Um, you might want to do like five dollars a day for a longer amount of time than putting a hundred bucks on two days so it hits fifty. You know, fifty dollars one day, fifty dollars the next. Um, also don't set up, um, your, so in Instagram, you can choose your profiles of who you want to hit your demographic, right? Your reach, your geographical location, but also their interests. Um, don't, you know, set it and forget it. Right. So you don't want to just have one audience that you're hitting every single time, make specific, specific custom ads to different areas. Um, and that'll really help you, um, you know, build that new follower. Um, demographic because you don't want to just hit the same people every single time then you're losing the whole point of ads so um, anyways that was both of your comments there that I thought linked really well together and I wanted to mention and y'all don't be scared to um, uh, ask us questions in the chat too we'd be happy to um, answer any of those but if we're moving on to another subject though and you guys might have something to add on to that but um, I would say that I think a lot of people that are on this call might be wondering what they would need to do if they're doing something from scratch, right? If it's a mm -hmm. business starting new, or if it's, um, you know, an individual looking to brand themselves, what they should do from scratch. When you guys started, um, what was your first thoughts? Um, whether it was, I don't know, Alex, if you started, if you were, you know, an individual, or if you were um, starting out at a big, uh, you know, uh, organization or not, but you know, what'd you guys do to, to start when you were thinking about branding? Well, yeah, I, I mean, so before United Way, I worked at a much smaller nonprofit um, organization. So that really was starting like from scratch. Um, and I mean, in a lot of different ways for, in terms of like marketing and branding. Um, now, of course, when I came into United Way, like there were things that were relatively well established, um, but definitely like had kind of been done haphazardly. Like there, there wasn't a, a me before me at my uh, at United Way. Um, so anyways, I think it's really that's it's really that is a hard question, I, I personally think, because you have to start with assessing you can't just you like you have to assess um, who are your audiences like who are you trying to communicate to and how are they getting their information 
And then that's where you start, you know, because I mean, every audience is different, like so different. (laughs) And, you know, you hear in marketing terms about like segmentation and like the narrower you can get and say, okay, for United Way, like, you know, we have like thousands and thousands of donors, right? But within that group, you know, we have people who are passionate about education or people who are passionate about, you know, health and, and, or, or economic mobility. And so like, how can we narrow the scope of who we're like, how we're communicating so that I'm not just making a blanket statement to all three and potentially not communicating or actually getting anything across to anyone because I haven't really honed my message to really speak to that that person's passion or why they give to United Way. So I think, um, you know, if you're starting from scratch, you just got to think about like what you're trying to sell, who's buying it, you know, who your audiences are, and then where are they getting their information in order to purchase or in order to donate or whatever that next step is. Um, And then that's where you want to, to reach them. And because it's going to be different for everybody. So it's not like a, Oh, everybody should start on Instagram or, Oh, everybody should start with a website. There are some businesses that I've worked with like they're just social media, like their social media pages serve as their website. You know, it's not for everybody, but it works sometimes. So um, there's not like, I don't have a, just like, that's my go-to answer. It really starts with that assessment. And I, I think for, for Spartan Waste, uh, in a past life, I was a co-owner of a different company that was a recycling organization that we developed 15 different facilities across the country. And as I was ready to give up, you know, traveling and airline perks and hotel perks and all that stuff and wanting to be in Spartanburg, wanting to be home and realizing that at 53, my perspective is different than it was at 33. And I'm not trying to be a national organization, but I wanted, if we're in the upstate and we're saying we're going to be in three or four counties, or if we say we're going to be within a hundred mile radius, you know, we needed to name ourselves. We needed to get a logo for ourselves. We wanted to get a tagline for ourselves. We needed to pick out our color schemes for our cans, our truck wraps, all this stuff. And I kept going down to, it needs to be simple. It needs to be catchy. It just needs to be easy, but it needs to be professional, you know? And we had worked with uh, another local individual who freelances and, you know, I was kind of noodling around some different things on names and he brought in a graphic designer for logo and we saw four or five different options. And I kept coming down to, you know, our present logo, which again, I'll just hold it up. That's, that's supposed to be the shield off of, you know, like a Spartan helmet. Okay. So it's not like the USC upstate Spartans or the Michigan state Spartans, but it's just, and I thought, holy cow, that's easy. That can go onto a heat stamp trash can that can go on our truck wrap that can go on these handy dandy lapel pins if anybody wants one just let me know here (laughs) thank you on those uh but it just it it once we set on it i was like my god that's perfect and now for me when i drive through anywhere in spartanburg county and union county where we have customers and and greenville county where we have customers and I see one of our cans out there and I'm driving by and I see the logo and I see the phone number, but I'm like, I know that's a Spartan waste can. So, you know, we intentionally went through the process. It, you know, being very candid with you, I think we spent about $8,000 up front. And as a small business starting up, some people may say, wow, that's a lot. I can tell you that every single dollar we spent there was incredibly well spent. Every single dollar we continue to spend with Arrowhead for us, for Spartan Waste, is incredibly well spent. Uh, You know, we as an organization are stronger with the partners that we work with. And that's, that's all facets. But again, where we can cross promote on our brand with their brand, we try to live that every single day. That's good. I love real numbers too. So just to, to speak to what you said, Arrowhead started with at $6,000 is what it took to start um, 
Arrowhead up. So I think that giving people a jumping point there is a good thing to have being real um, because you can't, I mean, not say you can't, um, but starting out there are definitely going to be some things you need to spend um, some money on. And, you know, where there's areas that you don't have to spend money, you know, skimp a little, you know, judge, be a judge of your own you know, marketing, uh, spend the dollars where you think is going to actually bring you something back. I always say that there needs to be um, a CTA, a call to action on every single piece of marketing that you put out. And if you're spending high dollars on something that doesn't have that, um, whatever that may be, then you're probably spending it wrong because you want to give um, people the opportunity to contact you, interact with you, you know, and I even say, you know, even bad interaction is good interaction because you learn who you want to work with. Um, and, you know, a lot of people get caught up in, oh my gosh, I got such a bad comment on that post or whatever, I'm going to block them. And, you know, sometimes you have to, um, but other times um, responding to that person, that bad review or anything um, is the best way to handle it because people can see, you know, the other side of what happened. Um, and not to say, you know, Honestly, uh, and this is truthful, I think we've only gotten one or two bad reviews since we started and you can't please everyone. That is just how that goes, period. If you try to please everyone, you're, you're gonna you know, be w really focused on such a broad you know, way of trying to please everyone that you're gonna miss out on your niche. So um, when Alex was talking earlier, she made a few points that made me think of this. Um, if you guys um, had never, if you guys have never heard of ever being evergreen, evergreen marketing, um, I think that there's good and bad sides to that. And what evergreen marketing is supposed to mean is that basically you can, um, you know, you can design something or create a messaging, a piece of messaging that could last for many years to come rather than, you know, just in the present. And, and like I said, I think there's a good place and a bad place for that. So a good place would be, again, if you're starting up and you don't have much money to spend creating things that are evergreen, such as, you know, a, uh, whatever your business card that's going to have your contact information that never changes, you know, make sure you have a solid, um, you know, phone number, email address, website that's not going to change for many years, you know, make sure that those kinds of things are evergreen, but you could be selling yourself short if you're doing some evergreen marketing um, on your social media ads and things like that, because people don't want to see, you know, uh, you know, we've, like I said, we've been open for five years now, me saying, hey, we're Arrowhead Design Company and we do web design. Okay. We've said that for five years now. You can see it on our website. You know all about that, right? No, we want to, you know, whether it's a, a GIF, a meme, you know, whatever's going on that's relevant. It doesn't have to always be funny. It can be serious. Um, uh, but, you know, on social media, people are scrolling quickly. So you only have a couple of seconds to get their attention. Um, but, you know, when it comes to being evergreen, uh, you know, take that into account that there's moments for it and there's you know, moments that you should shy away from that. But um, another point that Mark made about his logo, I wanted to point out with um, some of our stuff here. So you can see our logo behind me, Arrowhead Design Company. Um, I've had people tell me it looks like a gnome in your yard, <laughs> um, you know, and then uh, our old logo was actually a very etched looking arrowhead um so that was very, much more literal but we decided to go a little less literal and it's actually an a in our company font which is called barlow it's a google font um that you can access on digital and you can access on print so that's a good tip for anyone out there who's trying to make their logo their website and everything match google fonts can be used for print and digital so um, if you're looking for a font, you can look there. Um, so like I said, our font is Barlow. We use the letter A to create the point um, on the logo, right? And then just added the little figure at the bottom there, um, the little shape at the bottom to make it look like the shape of an arrowhead. And then when it came to actually naming our business, you know, we talked about a little bit earlier about stories and things like that. Um, ours is a little less um, cool, I guess. Uh, but I started thinking of words just from my um past I guess and I used to hunt for arrowheads with my dad when I was little around town and um, that's cute and all but the real 
the real reason why we named it Arrowhead was because it started with an A and I wanted to show up first on every piece of marketing. So when we would, you know, sponsor an event or something like that. So um, for, you know, for instance, when we sponsor something, you know, we might have donated a hundred bucks, but then over here, um, and I apologize if anyone from Denny's is on this call, but it's a great example. <laughs> Denny's starts with a D, you know, uh, Denny's could have donated 10 grand, but Arrowhead's listed first. And uh, that's because Arrowhead starts with an A. So that's think genius. about, <laughs> think now about, you tell us, now you tell us. <laughs> Yeah, so um, not that you have to do that necessarily, but it is something to think about where is your logo going to be placed, right? Um, who's going to be seeing your brand? What are they going to register, you know, when they see it? Everyone's different, you know, and it, it's the same thing as when you go look at fine art in a museum, someone will hate a painting and someone will love it. So not everybody's going to love, you know, your logo and your brand. But if you have literal points that make sense like that to to actually help help you, you know, have a reason for what you're doing, you know, always have a reason for what you're doing. That's. I just uh, want to. I just want to chime in to something you said, Lainey, because you're talking about fonts and Google fonts, and I um I just wanted to note that like I think sometimes when we think about branding, brand like the word brand feels much more like strategic, high level, but like branding really is in the details. And so when you talk about things like font and color and all of that, like I know we might, it might sound like we're talking about but design or something like that, but like make it just the simple tip of like, make sure that you pick a, a, a font and you stick to it and always use the same font and color, <laughs> you know, like that's, that's brand. Um, and so I don't know, just when you were talking about that, um, it made me sort of, like they, the devil is in the details when it comes to branding and I just want to make that right point. yeah and I saw Emily too make a point uh in the chat there like a arrangement the local florist that one is when I make that comment to clients that is like what everyone's first reaction is is because they've passed that and seen that it's literally an a and an a back to back and yes genius doesn't necessarily sound the best <laughs> but it's genius right? <laughs> Listen, one, one thing to tag in what you both are saying, and here's our my business card that, and again, not shameless plug for Arrowhead, but this was an Arrowhead design business card. But, you know, everything is I wear a Spartan lace sweatshirt right now because it was chilly today, or if I grab you know, one of our high-vis Spartan waist hoodies that our drivers would wear, the tagline on back, keep it clean, it's also conscious for us that our people, our team, in the office, part-time, full-time drivers, they're all our brand ambassadors, you know, so they're all representing the company. They're all helping us build the company. But again, it just, consistency, right? And as Alex said, consistency in colors, consistency in fonts. I mean, that uniformity, again, it gives you I want to say credibility because it's like they're paying attention to the details. It's subconscious, but it's there. They know you're paying attention. So again, as anybody who's working on a branding assignment, whether it be for themselves, their own business, for someone they work for, again, everything that's been discussed right now, I view as incredibly beneficial information. And also there was a use for that color change there. Because if you guys notice, Spartan Waste colors are green and white. Um, but that high vis bright yellow on there has a use to it. Obviously they're out and about um, in situations where their drivers are getting out of vehicles and they need to be safe. So, um, you know, that extra color being thrown in there is not straying away from their brand. There's a use, you know, for that. So um, think about that. When you look at people's social media pages too, you'll see that, you know, their colors may be a certain thing, but they're using tons of colors on their page. It's not them straying away from their brand. It's all purposeful, right? Mm -hmm. um, people say that there's a certain mindset you can get from colors. There's also a certain mindset you can get from um, textures too, for instance. I actually have a link here. I'm going to drop in the chat. Um, we use um, move for our business cards is a very big place. It's not local, shamefully, but um, it's because, um, you know, Moo has suede business cards and, you know, you don't want to be tacky. So I'm not sitting here saying do anything crazy that's going to make people be like, what is this? But, you know, look at 
things that'll make people remember you subconsciously, right? So a lot of good marketing is indirect marketing, right? It's stuff that, you know, someone might not need your service right now, but if they're constantly seeing you post um, serious things, funny things, whatever it may be on social media, they're going to remember you later, or um, you also have the opportunity of hitting someone's um, friend with an ad, right? So if someone's like, oh, my buddy needs a website, right? And they see um, our post, but their friend's not attached to the feed to be able to see it, right? You know, it's indirect marketing is absolutely huge. Um, so another link that I put in there was um, dot. It's actually a new thing that's going around and not specifically that you need to use that, but I thought it would be a talking point. Always look for um, new things um, that, that people are doing. Dot is a digital business card where you only have one. And when you meet somebody, um, you would pull that digital business. Well, it's, it's a physical card, but you only have one. And when you tap it on someone's phone, it's a huge list like um, Linktree. If you guys have ever used Linktree, um, that's huge and popular right now, which I'll talk about in a second. But um, but it'll give you a list of all of your links, all of your contacts, your social media, which, and you know, when you look at a business card, you're looking at eight point font. The rule in graphic design is never to go, you know, go below eight points there, but some people, you know, disregard that and they'll put a ton of information on a business card or they'll put not enough, right? If you're using something digital like that. You can actually get all the links across and link tree. If you guys haven't heard of that, um, as an opportunity to have a bunch of links inside of one link. So for instance, on Instagram, um, when you say link in bio, you know, before it was most of the time a link to your website, right? Now, if you have a link tree link and you click that link in bio, it will actually take you to another page full of a list of links. And people are using that generically to do, um, you know, just their website and social media pages, or some people are running ads, doing giveaways, all kinds of things on their link tree. So definitely a tip there is if you haven't looked into that, look into it a little bit. I have caught a little bit of wind of um, a developer telling me that link tree can actually hurt your SEO though, because it's only um, filtering through one link um, and they don't have the best analytic background yet to be able to track things. So Currently, I'm telling you it's a good idea. In the future, you might need to watch out for the actual analytics back end of it. But the functionality and the user friendliness uh, right now of Linktree is uh, really huge. So when we're talking on having uh, things to, I guess, track, track stuff by, um, what does United Way use? That would be actually a huge thing to know as far as tracking. So just Google Analytics. Um, yeah, Google Analytics is our big one. And you mentioned Google Ads earlier. We actually got a Google Ads grant and are doing Google Ads as a nonprofit. So it's like, wow. whoa. <laughs> um, right. Donations, probably a ton of them, right? Ho just hopefully. Well, we have, we actually just launched it um, in April, April 1st. So we're still gathering data and seeing where people are going. But yeah, Google Analytics um, for the website. And then we actually have a platform for social media that we use separately co-schedule it's not like a secret co-schedule is what it is <laughs> <laughs> okay that's awesome so one thing uh, also to mention with tracking I think that would actually be a huge tip um, for me to you guys anybody starting out is having some form of tracking there's a bunch of different tracking options out there but um, I would recommend at least having one area of your business or personal growth as a brand to be able to track um, when people come in, uh, for me as clients and they're asking me, where should they start? You know, and they tell me, uh, you know, sometimes I get a budget, sometimes I don't. Um, but the best thing you can do again is, um, create call to actions to be able to do something. And if that, um, is just social media because you can't currently afford a website, you know, or other reasons you don't know how to manage a website, stuff like that. Um, you know, at least track something. Uh, another really good tool, let me see here, I saved a bunch of links for you guys. So I'm gonna be dropping them in the chat here. Um, we've got, there we go. We've got um, 
Google domains and Google, oh, that was Google domains. I meant to send Google analytics, but um, Google analytics is, is right off of Google domains. So you can find, you can find that there, but um, HubSpot is a CRM, a customer relationship management tool. So, um, you know, that's not always needed if you're doing a personal brand, I think you could probably, you know, organize yourself, but if say you're working for a small company or even a bigger one that doesn't have a CRM, um, consider it, it will actually track all of your emails, all of your conversations with people, um, it can track where they came from, even down to a phone call, how it does that, I don't know. But, you know, going from, you know, someone clicked on this ad that I paid for, they landed on my website, they went to this page on my website, clicked contact, and then sent an email to me from there. It's nice and very useful to know what that uh, behavior flow, as they call it, is because then you can say, hey, okay, I've got a hundred hits on this one page on my site. The rest have five hits, you know, put something really valuable on that one page that's getting hits or pay attention to why that one page is getting hits so that you can implement the same thing on your other pages. Right. So um, those are all good, good tools there. Um, I don't know if you guys have anything to add to that, but we could talk more about websites too. If you guys are interested in all that app. Well, listen, we know, again, for evolution standpoint that, you know, we didn't have a lot of content just starting out for a website. So we almost needed perhaps more fluff on maybe owner bios, things of this nature. But, you know, certainly as we've been in discussion with Arrowhead to update our, our website, we need to evolve, right? And now we have two and a half years of track record and, and you know, of success and, you know, our Google reviews, et cetera, that, and again, what started at, at the beginning was effective. Now it's, it's kind of outdated, even though it's two and a half years. And for us, we need to, to stay current. And, and again, for folks that are on this call, that's the one thing I'll keep preaching. You know, this is a living thing. You know, you need to constantly be putting effort into it. Right. And ask your younger generations too, because, um, my uh, actually my brother's like seven years younger than me and um he will always tell me something new and i always feel so relevant because my company literally does marketing and branding for a living and then he'll come out and be like have you done this have you seen this and i'm like um no i haven't <laughs> and it's because there are different you know there are different generations with different tools so you're marketing too when you know you're thinking about marketing to everyone you know you might want to think about number one your niche so if your niche is an older demographic or younger, you know, you need to be looking at those tools that reach those audiences. And if you're trying to reach absolutely everyone, um, good luck, but also make sure you, again, uh, filter into different channels and message accordingly. Because, you know, if the younger generation is um, watching video, because that's going to be um, the one way you're going to be able to relate to them, right? Make sure that you have some form of video, whether it's internally or you hire somebody out to do it. Um, and then, you know, if you're looking at an older generation, older audience that's, that likes to read, um, you know, have a blog because um, they do say that something about, uh, I don't remember the exact percentage, but I want to say it was in the seventies was um, when you're selling to people online, e-commerce, um, it's actually a lot of the older generation that's now coming around to being able to use it and purchase online, right? They don't want to get out. Maybe they're scared of COVID. Maybe, you know, it could be a million different reasons why they're not wanting to get out. Maybe they physically can't. Um, you know, the older generation has oftentimes the most money. And when you're marketing to them and you're just completely forgetting about them on social media and such, um, you're missing an audience there. So just remember, you've got a bunch of different audiences that you can reach out to. Um, I was go just ahead. gonna, yeah, I just wanted to, to jump in and say one thing that we kind of haven't talked about, we've talked, or well, we've, we've talked a lot about, um, you know, bringing in new folks and how do you find, you know, how do you talk to new audiences and things like that. But I do just want to take a second to talk about, um, 
once they've made that purchase, once they've become a customer, once they've become a donor for us, that brand and marketing and, and all that whole brand experience does not end with that purchase button click. Um, so then there's brand cultivation and relationship management after that. And so, you know, um, we've, again, we've talked a lot about like how to get people to your website and social media and being in front of new eyes, but there's an old marketing adage that the best customer you have, or it's like, yeah, the best customer you have is the one you already have. Um, and so developing, making sure that you're staying in touch and continuing to put your brand in front of the people that have already, you know, decided to, to do whatever that call to action was, is a really, really critical part of just any brand and brand experience um, that the, the relationship doesn't stop once they, once, once, once you've got them to buy in. I love that. That is, that's, that's a huge point because there's lots of ways you can do that uh, digitally, but you want to obviously, what that boils down to is cherishing relationships. You just sent them through whatever funnel it was to get them to you. Right. It's keeping them after, um, after that point. And one yep. easy way to do that, at least that I've seen from an e-commerce perspective after purchasing, because I'm, um, I guess you could say a victim of it is when you purchase something and then later you get another email message saying, you know, this would go along nicely with what you just purchased. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of a, another way of saying what you're saying, uh, but from yeah. an e-commerce perspective. For sure. So everything you said, Alex, is incredibly important. It's spot on and it's, you know, we notice, for example, on, you know, for what we're doing on Facebook and Instagram, that we tend to get more interaction on posts that involve people and the images as opposed to digitally created, you know, ads or, or, or spaces there and tying things in with our customer base, existing customers is also very effective and, and tends to be appreciated. But, you know, Laney, I was glad to hear you talk about, you know, the seniors and folks as they have, you know, as, I don't consider myself old, but, you know, we got computers in my high school when I was a junior, right, you know, and I've never loved the computer. It's a tool for me, but it's not something I relish spending time in front of. And so for the, as we all saw the seniors that struggle with getting their COVID vaccine, vaccination appointments, right, you know, now that that's opened up, in my head, I thought, you know what, that's probably something that we should do a better job on, you know, for customer retention or just customer appreciation reaching out because we do have a lot of followers. There are a lot of old people on Facebook, right? We have a lot of our older customers follow us on Facebook. And so that's probably something that we can do a better job on ourselves. So sure. Taking a few notes today. I, I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> I would like to say too another point to that um, just one last I guess little thing I can share here um, is that when you're looking I always preach this to my graphic designers and my employees is the um, end user right so if I think that something that we're about to push out or for a client we're about to push out um, who's seeing it how are they going to react right and um, making sense of it because it can look good to you, it can sound good to you, but you know, do those two pieces fit well together and make sense? You see um, funny um, memes all the time about people who have put two pictures beside each other and that accidentally created a picture that looked terrible or something, or you know what I mean? So think about not just the literal post, um, and that's again, relevant to social media, but it can be relevant to anything. It could be a magazine ad side by side. You could have you know, a, a header on this page that ends up butting onto a header on another page um, title-wise, and it makes a new sentence that you didn't even realize if you hadn't laid the pages out side by side to physically see them, right? So actually look at how whatever you're doing is being applied and make sure you're looking at what the final product is. You're not just talking about it conceptually and then throwing it into whatever it is and you know, having it, the first time you see it complete is already live, right? Make sure the first time you see it complete is before it goes live. And I had a couple more links just because I like things that you can go do, those CTAs, call to actions, right? Mm -hmm. So nobody should leave here without something to do for their brand. Um, I have a couple of things here. I really like to listen to Erin on demand. It did not give you her link. Hold on, let's see here. 
copy my link. Oh, really long. Okay, hopefully that goes there. Um, but Erin On Demand is a really cool um, YouTube channel to listen to. She is awesome. Um, she is basically your real world um, person going through day-to-day -day learning how to do things herself and sharing it with people. It's really cool. And then Skillshare is a platform that we use in the office um, because you don't know how to do everything. So when you don't know how to do something, Skillshare has lots of um, open web. Anyone can um, post a um, video on how to do something. It's basically a place for full of tutorials. They get approved by Skillshare. So it's not like it's just, you could just look at anything there, you know, watched and approved by Skillshare, but it definitely will teach you how to do things. So again, if you're going back to your budget um, and starting something up, or you're with a big company and that, ha that has a budget for a, a big organization or anything, you know, and you don't necessarily have the, the time or whatever, maybe you might any funds to be able to do something go figure it out on your own go check out go check out Skillshare well this has been great guys um I did want to just take a second and let everyone know if you're not a member of Spartanburg Young Professionals please join us um, and view our social media and website um, we host events and um we have social media events, program events, kind of like these, um, and also uh, really send out blog details, uh, just local things. So we really would love to have you guys join us and uh, be able to continue to consume the content like we have today. Thank you all for being here. And yeah. Yep, thanks um, everybody. Thanks for that info from us, for us today, panel speakers, it was great. Um, Thanks, Glad guys. to be here. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, guys.